You are now listening to the Backseat Critics, the movie review podcast. Welcome back to the Backseat Critics. After technical difficulties, we are two take bobs tonight. <laughs> yes, we are. My name's Andrew. And my name's RJ. This is a podcast where we talk about movies that you should steer clear of, including this week's Can of Worms from 1999. And we are opening up that Can of Worms with our two takes. Uh, yes, we are. Yes, we are. This is the second take. Uh, previously, as mentioned before, in the first take. But you know what? Here I am again doing the two-minute review because somebody doesn't know how to start his mic. But it's okay. Oops. We're here. We all mess up in life. My bad, guys. My bad. My bad. I'll write an apology letter. I'll I'll send it out. Just send me your email. Uh, you can send it to at Big Danger. Uh, was it nineteen ninety two nineteen? Wow. Anyways, <laughs> we're gonna move on with life. Two minute review about the Disney can o worms. Yes, we are. We got homie who wants to be abducted by aliens. Aliens come and try to uh, get him abducted in outer space. Yes, they he do. He sucks at getting abducted. He doesn't want really want to leave. A talking dog tries to get him. He's nope, not for you today. Nope, nope, nope. And then all of a sudden he gets abducted. His uh, homie's brother gets abducted by uh, Mr. Toad. He goes into Mr. Toad's land, gets him back, and then aliens still try to get him. He goes, no soup for you, and stays home. Boom. Done. Quick question, though. Is this a Halloween movie? No. Okay. Cool. I, I don't feel like it's a Halloween movie. I think it's just an odd movie that you can just throw in. You know You know what? I would say this is a good summer night movie. This is a good summer night movie. Yeah, absolutely. A little hot outside. Your family's sitting around. You back cozy the, up. You want to see some aliens? You know, maybe you're not... Like you know, maybe you're you're it's it's hot out. You know, when you live in an older home, air conditioning wasn't as prominent back then. You have the windows open. You pop some popcorn. You're sitting on the couch. You just some got done ice and sw- some pink lemonade. Swimming in those uh swimming pools. You know that have the like oh the kitty pools like the fish. Oh, in the bottom. Like the fish in the bottom. Maybe yeah. you did that as a kid Little in the nineties. Fish, yeah. Maybe you had one of those ones that have like the the giraffes and the safari creatures mm-hmm. all around the end that was kind of flimsy on the outside. Maybe you had one of those pools. Maybe you were just really rich and had one of those bigger pools. But in the ground. But in the ground. Or maybe you had, like, you were super rich and you had an in-ground pool and your family had a diving board and all that great stuff. But you know what? You just got done after a great day of swimming in the 90s and you decided to come inside. You want some pink lemonade? You got your popcorn? You're like, what am I going to watch? I feel like not watching. Oh, no, 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 no. Andrew. Andrew, Andrew, hold the phone. I'm holding. I'm holding. You know what? You did not experience this. These 90s Disney Channel original movies, as a kid, every night when you came inside to watch dinner, they would pitch this movie and put it down your throat that this movie was coming out. Okay. So for our new listeners. So you look forward to this. Uh, so for our new listeners, just a little this background. This movie you look forward to. <laughs> for For our new listeners here. I have not seen, uh, I mean, outside of what we've reviewed here on the Backseat Critics, I have not seen a single Disney Channel original movie up to this point. RJ has. He grew up with this stuff. And you had robots, these little cartoon robots telling you about the movie. They had the movie surfers. They had everything. And this is all you heard about when you're eating dinner. You go outside and play. You come back inside. And you watched whatever was on the TV station, and they would just keep on pitching, hey, Can of Worms is coming. Can of Worms is coming. And so you look forward to this on Friday night. So you got your popcorn. You got your Coca-Cola. And you're sitting down, and you're like, ah, time to watch this movie. And you watch it, and you go, okay, that's all right. And then you go to bed. (laughs) (laughs) And there we go. All right. All right. You know, I, I, I kind of get it. Not with the Disney experience, but with just, you know, bad movies. Yeah, so this wasn't, you just kind of flip it on. Oh, no, this was mom. Oh, the claw is on. Put that tape in the VCR and get ready to illegally record this movie so I can watch it tomorrow. I think half my parents' VHS collection was illegal. That's okay. Who didn't record anything back in the 90s and early 2000s? I, I don't know of anybody who didn't. You know what was actually a fun one? 
recording yourself play like a James Bond game. Oh, see, I never did that. You never record yourself playing video games? No. So my parents were pretty strict on when I when I could play the Nintendo. Oh. I was a PC guy. I was a PC guy. I had a Windows 95 back in the day. And you didn't record that? No. It was, it's kind of fun, actually, to go back and... Especially if we rewind the tape, like after a round of uh, James Bond, you play it with your friends. You're like, oh, ha, 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 you did that. I didn't catch that. So I've never actually seen the James Bond. Uh, I've never actually played the James Bond game on Nintendo 64. That's right. I, I, hot take. I just saw that it came out on, on Switch. Hot take. Don't tell me it's bad. Nightfire I like more. I've actually heard that a lot. I think I think Nightfire was really well done. And I don't think people recognize it. No, I I think it's like really well recognized. Anytime I see um, Golden Eye brought up, Nightfire is always in the comments, like hot on the tails. It's I think it is better than Golden Eye. I've I've heard that so much. Still haven't played either. I need to play Golden Eye. Yeah. But I also need to play. I need to play Nightfire. Play Golden Golden Eye was the start of it, and I think it did a really good segue. But oh, Nightfire did it ten times better after. Mm. I remember I rented that from Blockbuster, played that, oh, Hollywood Video, Hollywood Video, and played that for the week I had it. Yeah? <laughs> Actually, it's five days, I think. That, <laughs> that five days, that's all I did. Hey, at least, at least Blockbuster didn't block you from, I don't know, sharing your rented VHS with your friends and family, like, you know, Netflix and their whole password sharing fiasco. Oh, I haven't heard about this. Oh, you haven't? No. Oh, so they're blocking people from password sharing. You're having to re-enter your password or um, like every 31 days or something like that from your home IP address. It's nuts. What if I have a family account? I, I From what I've heard, they don't really care, but I'd have to look into that. Hmm. Well, if you have different profiles. That, from my understanding, still has to be in the same wow yeah they're they're cracking down hard i bet you i almost guarantee you they're gonna lose a ton of subscribers and it's kind of ironic that they're doing this right after they put out a um a tv show on blockbuster Mm-hmm. just seems kind of ironic and then they canceled it and they they've now oh, they canceled that they too. canceled the show they've killed blockbuster twice officially they have finally put blockbuster they're like what hasn't i kind of i kind of wanted like a side by side two different fields but like who's killed more products or things netflix with their series or google with their products i just want a side by side who's who's killed more i just think it's funny that netflix just keeps on destroying things it's it's crazy it's crazy Anyways, we gotta get back to Canada. Yeah, we, do. we just this rambled is too off. Too <laughs> good of a movie. Anyway, oh, sure, <laughs> sure. All right, where do you want to start with this movie? What do you got? Let's go with favorite aliens, because this is a movie about aliens coming down to visit Mike. Yeah, the hustler kid from Recess. Shout out to the hustler kid in Recess. If you haven't seen Recess, great TV show. Absolutely. Great cartoon. Super 90s. Check it out. And he does the voice of the hustler kid. And he is 10 times better as the hustler kid than he, <laughs> he is, is as this. Mike. I respect the hustler kid more than I respect this kid. Yeah, this kid was... We're supposed to sympathize with him as a victim of being bullied, but yet he's bullying back? Anyways, so favorite aliens. Is that where we were at? Yeah, let's go favorite aliens. You are the best alien! Congratulations! Ah! What's your number one? What you got? That's a great alien. I don't know where that alien was in the movie, but he was great. Hold on. Hold on, that was another great a- alien. <laughs> I am so happy that you can rattle these aliens off. So my favorite alien was the salesman alien. <laughs> I think the costume was just done perfectly for him. He was annoying as heck. His powers were interesting, how he couldn't make you oh, move. He, yeah, he just froze you in place. The two eyes, it kind of reminds me of, I believe, Crumb from All Real Monsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like an alien form of him. Okay. 
I really enjoyed that alien. My number one is the throat, the frog dude that's capturing people. Why? Why? You want me to ruin it for you? How? Land of the Lost, fantastic movie. With Will Ferrell? Yeah, yeah, You know, the the land that they go on, there's a bunch of those toad creature thingies? Yeah, yeah, They did it better. That's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Why Why is this your favorite? Why? Because he's got the little working neck thing going on where it's like, whoa, whoa. You know? So this is you pick this character because it's something that you can relate to? Uh, no, of <laughs> course not. No, if we're doing, <laughs> you got caught off guard on that one. <laughs> if we're talking characters I'm related to, I mean, clearly it's the jock. But no, nah. y- yeah, no. But I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm shocked that that was your number one. I, I enjoyed it. Hmm. I, I enjoyed it. I don't know. My number two was the boom. Uh, the lawyer? The little stinky garbage looking dude. This guy was all looked all crinkled up, all green. When he came in, he got was a goop all over his food and yeah. dude ate a ton of food. Made that popcorn pop, 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 pop. He ate popcorn or ate some, some and he corn just on the shot cob. it out of his pores. Okay, hold the phone here, by the way, before we get to your number two. <laughs> what kind of kid's just like, oh, I'm hungry. I'm going to make a snack. He like barbecues himself a hamburger, basically, and has corn on the cob and all this stuff. I was right? just like, what the frick is this kid doing? Well, I'm like, I want a snack. I'm throwing together like maybe a light salad or I'm like popping up some popcorn or chips. I didn't know that we were watching the documentary on Chef Boyardee here. Right? Yeah. When, when he said snacks and then he brings like a, a, a full on hamburger. Yeah. Like a massive lunch. Like I'm like, seriously? In a corn on the cob as well. I was just like, what the fudge? What is this guy's calorie intake for like a day? Um, if this is a snack. The way he's wired and then the way he plays football, it probably just psh- Right out. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Welcome to our intermission. You have made it once again. <laughs> we are surprised. Congratulations. You made it halfway through or about thereabouts somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Wherever this intermission is, you've made it here. Today we'd like to do a special shout out to a very special artist, local artist here in the Portland metro area of Oregon. Mm-hmm. Ayla, shout out to Art by Ayla. Check her out at Instagram, Art by Ayla. A R T B Y A Y L A. She's got some good stuff. Uh, I myself don't have anyone to shout out, so I will shout out ourselves. Check out the Backseat Critics wherever you get podcasts. It could be Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or even on YouTube. We'll be there. Find us there. Thank you for listening. We love you, Ireland. Enjoy the second half. Ireland. What's your number two? My number two, I didn't catch this one's name, but it was the woo, the fishy lady. Oh, you know what? That is my number three. She's thirsty. She's so thirsty. She was, I think he, she was going to take him and do naughty things. <laughs> things just, we cannot say on this show. No, no. But 100%, I loved her energy. She was like, I, I've i got a goal, and I'm going to get it. And, and I'm going to do you. it. <laughs> I, wonder what, I wonder what her plan's like. Right? Also, how? Yes. Also, I, I love the little detail that her, her little portal was just like a clam. All the portals were, were kind of fun, actually. Yeah. I don't think there was one that I did not like. Actually, the throat... His portal was just kind of round. I, I she kind of thought that one was kind of boring. But it had like a a, a toad shape outside of the round. Yeah, like you bit. could make out a toad. I, I feel like they could have leaned into that a bit more. Sure, but that's just my one criticism. Uh, so you you've done all three now. I've done all three. All right, I got to catch up. So my number three is actually the salesman as well. I love seeing like the full body. Him. That was the best part. That was the best part. Just seeing how like short and pudgy this guy is. He's like three feet tall, maybe. It's kind of like when you see Alf for the first time in a, in a full body. Oh, he's full body. 
body, and it's like, what? But the only thing is that this guy doesn't, because he's kind of more computer animated or more puppety. He doesn't run as quickly as Alf, or look at, as creepy as Alf. But still, it's kind of the same thing when you see the full body of Alf and you see the full body of this guy. You're like, oh, geez. What's funny is this guy's like right front and center on the cover. Oh and yeah. I just thought like, oh, he's a big slug thing. But little did I realize his feet are literally right behind the main character. I've never yes. noticed that. Like, I didn't notice that until after I saw the movie. I'm like, oh, he's not, like, falling off the the edge of the poster. He's just standing in the middle of it, I guess. The great part, too, about this guy that you see him, when you see him on the cover and everything, you think, oh, he's going to be, like, the main alien. Right. He's only there for, like, five, ten minutes, maybe. Yeah, like, two scenes. Tops. Yeah, he's not in there for long. I mean, you see him in the background in a couple of scenes, but not he's not prominent at all. Just quickly, uh, I loved that the um, actually I think the like animatronics and like puppetry for most of the aliens wasn't bad. It was done by uh, Steve Johnson's group. No, it wasn't done bad at all. Um, they did stuff like for the Ghostbusters, Bicentennial Man, Species, etc. <laughs> um, species, species. The one. one. <laughs> if they, now we know where they got the idea for the thirsty one. <laughs> If you ever see a movie, if you ever go to a movie wait, store, wait, you're gonna find species for a dollar. That fish, that fish alien. Her spinoff, her solo movie, species. You know that we know, we know what she's doing. She's gonna kill him. Probably. That movie and Splice. I feel like you could always find oh, those two yeah. for. At a movie a dollar, store, dollar, dollar and a half. It's always in the dollar bin. Always in the dollar bin. Who's watching? They were advertised so much as a kid. They just went over my head as a kid. I was like, forget that. I'm on Disney Channel and I'm watching Can of Worms. <laughs> I'm excited for my Friday night movie. <laughs> right? But yeah. Uh, yeah. No, actually the pub tree and, and like aliens and stuff are like super good. Yep. But anyways, I digress. Next topic. So let's go with the most annoyingest characters in this movie. There's a lot of choices. Yeah, there are. Yeah, there are. There's plenty. You're annoying. I'll go first this time. Okay, let's go. Mike. Yep, 100%. Number (laughs) one. He is a kid that you just... (sighs) You know in Punk's, the kid with the pocket protector? Yes. Mike. Mike. You know the kid that farts in the hallway and looks at you and smiles and laughs? Mike. Mike. You know the guy in the bathroom that just destroyed it up and you walk in and he's washing his hands and then you walk in and then he leaves and another guy walks in and he looks at you and speak and looks at you and like, oh, you're disgusting. And he thinks that you blew up the bathroom. In reality is the guy that was washing his hands and smiling. The guy Mike. washing his hands and smiling? Mike. Do you know that guy who trips you and then you turn and give him a strong glare and he's like oh my gosh i'm so sorry why would you look at me like that mike you know the guy that grabs your foot when you're trying to walk up a pair of stairs <laughs> and trips you into a wall mike. aj oh <laughs> <laughs> you know the guy that's cartier <laughs> that's mike more in full mike full mike he's you know the guy that tries to copy us and tries to make a podcast called the backseat critics and tries to copy us and do other movies mike mike do you know the guy who like poops in the urinal mike oh i, I thought that was me <laughs> anyways <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 not where you go <laughs> i'm so sorry all right all right let's up this you know the guy who poops in the sink mike Oh, we don't do that there either. Oh boy! <laughs> I thought those big sinks. You you said that Mike was the one that destroys the bathroom, but here you are actually destroying the bathroom. I mean, they're like big, and you know, I like to have a lot of airflow. Mike, <laughs> <laughs> do you not just stand over the toilet and hope you hit? <laughs> what, Mike? That's a Mike move. That's a total Mike. Total Mike move. But Mike is the most annoyingest character in this movie. 100%. He's he's biggest baby. Who goes out and sends it out a a thing to aliens saying, come and duck me. I am not meant for this planet. They are keeping me captive. And the fact that he's 
he he gets pranked on by the the jock guy and then he retaliates plays, yeah he retaliates full blown and then he's still like oh what was me i'm i'm the victim here and Get he does a life mike he doesn't expect the jock to not come back at him after he just wrecked him in class right and then when the jock comes back at him he's like oh no what did you deserve this? it's like dude what do you think you went after him you couldn't have been the bigger man mike is the most annoying character in this movie 100% what do you got for number two? My number two? Yeah, number two. My number two? <sighs> Not the ones I leave in the sinks. Whoa. <sighs> Whoa. Whoa. Nah, I don't leave them in the sinks. You know, I'd, be, I'd, I'd actually be very mad if I walked in and I saw a turd in the sink. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, who the? <laughs> like, <sighs> I just picked that. So, Anyways. Yeah, well, that's a problem for tomorrow, Andrew. Uh, my number two. I'm actually going to go with the best friend. Mm, he's my number three. I just he was annoying. He was kind of clingy. He also had the same like kind of he's victim. He's a gaslighter. He is a gaslighter. He fires up Mike. Mm-hmm. Like, what you gonna do, Mike? You gonna yeah. let him talk to you about like that? Yeah. You go get him, Mike. Don't let him talk to you like that. Get him, get him. Send that virus over to everybody else's computers about yeah. him being a pig and put it on his face and go ooh cha 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 cha. Get him, Mike. Get it. But then meanwhile, like, he's kind of the worst kind of friend where, like, Mike is telling the uh, the, the kid brother or something like that uh, a story. And the guy's like, oh, that's the best you got? Oh, you're buying this? They're, like, really tied up with the story? Or Mike's like, I'm in trouble. And he goes, oh, wow, you suck, Mike. Yeah. You suck? You think there's aliens? I'm sorry, Mike. You're delusional. Why can't you just be a friend and go along with it? Exactly. Like, be, be your friend. And maybe, he, maybe this guy that you've known and you trust isn't such a psychopath. Maybe he's not lost his mind, but maybe he's just like in a cry for help stage. You know, we have the high school musical friends, and they're terrible, terrible mm-hmm. friends. And here we are. We have a terrible friend again. Disney is good at making terrible friends. Yes, which is really surprising for a movie uh, company that's all about friendship. It's actually really surprising, too, when you're trying to raise kids and put them in the right way. And you're like, hey, let's watch this family-friendly movie. And then here we are. Horrible influences. Yeah, horrible influences. You know what? I am so not shocked these days about how kids backstab each other or how adults backstab each other because here we are. We're seeing it in movies. Yeah. Influence. Mm -hmm. Monkey see, monkey do. What's your number two? Um, My number two, that's right. That was my number three. Is this friend? The dad. Oh. Mike's dad. Okay. He was just, he was frustrating. He said, like, come on, Mike, we're going to be fun football. <laughs> Let's go play that football, Mike. You're going to be a great football player. Mike doesn't. Football. He has the hand-eye coordination of an elephant. <laughs> he, he's he got the the direction, like the internal compass of Christopher Columbus. He's got the heart of a fart. Yeah. Yeah, he's, that's what it is. He doesn't have that dog in him in sports. He just the dad's treatment of Mike is basically like, "Oh, if you don't do football, I'm not going to love you." Yeah, he's one of those types of dads. Which, by the way, total Mike move. Mm-hmm. That maybe that's where Mike got it from. The he, dad was number three, number two for me. Number two, and the best the best friend was number three for you. Number three, best friend. Okay, I burnt my three again fast. Yeah, you did. Stop hugging it up. Uh, my number three is. I actually didn't really have a number three, but I'm gonna go with the jock. Why? Because it was kind of annoying. He wasn't annoying himself. It was annoying how he was written. Because some scenes he was playing the dumb jock. He was like, they were explaining to him like, "Oh, you're the you're mm. the the bait for the trap," and he's like, "Oh, what?" And there's like parts with, where they like play that end up. But then he's also like a hacker and very smart. And athletic. And athletic. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, you know, choose a side. So it wasn't so much that that he himself was annoying. It was like the writing around it. It's like when you write a character, write a character. Don't write two and then give him, unless you're writing the movie split. What I find kind of funny about this movie too with their football real quick. There's only four guys on the sideline. Really? I didn't catch that. There's only four guys on the sideline and Mike. 
Is this like a small town or something? It has to be a small town. I couldn't think of anything else outside of that. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Like football's crazy popular. I mean, you would figure in a small town, like even in a small be, town, a lot of people play. Yeah, you would figure like a lot of people would show up to a small town football game. Like I'm surprised his friend, aka Gilbert from Under Wraps, isn't mm-hmm. out there playing as well. Like you, good call with the name, Gilbert. Yeah, from Under Wraps. Yeah, I didn't even remember the name. Yeah, Gilbert from Under Wraps. He, I'm surprised he's not playing. Yeah, but here we are. I mean, they, they I mean, they turned up and got lit for the high school dance, but. It, here for yeah, here we are. No, well, you can only put what fifteen, sixteen people. Also, let's people talk about that high school dance just really quickly. What kind of like OSHA hazard zone is this? With a little witch character like flying in and then zooming back out, the little like lazy Susan that spins around. That apparently he had a program. Uh, what sparklers what the, and stuff like the projector that like you try to like teachers used to use and. Use those plastic sheets, put them up. Yeah, but, like, he's got the Lazy Susan thing that he had a program, and it couldn't just be, like, a Lazy Susan. Um, rotating around, it's got, like, sparklers and lights on it, but then there's, like, paper mache and, like, sorry, not paper mache, but there's just, like, paper ribbon just all over the place. Oh, yeah. No, this was not done well. No. And teachers are just like, ah, ah, ah. this is great. We're all going to die. Mm-hmm. It's, it was just, it was a mess. It was. It was. It was an absolute mess. Anyways, uh, do you want to go into scenes? Yeah, let's go into scenes. We're off to talk about scenes. What's happening? The magical wizard on? of scenes. I'm so confused. Everything. What you got for number one? Mm. My number one. Uh. <clears throat> so my number one is actually the introduction to the salesman character when Mike is trying to talk to his little love interest and the salesman character freezes him down on the ground and then pulls him like teleports him across the streets and then like talks to him. You know, that was my number two. I know we were doing scenes tonight and that was actually in my head. That was going to be my number one as well. Oh really? And then I just thought of another scene in my head and I was like, no, this this scene's the number one. What but is I it? agree that that is a fantastic scene. I just love seeing that that guy part. just like hop around and stuff. I know he's not the throat, which was my favorite costume for the aliens, or just design of the alien. But just the way he talks, kind of smooth, fast, sells many. It was good. good. It was fake good. Fake used car, like an actor. If you're trying to act, like I love the car eyes, salesman. like the the eye puppetry. Like that was solid. I think what was solid is that he doesn't have the arms too. He has that power that can freeze him. Yeah. And he just ruined Mike's chances with that girl. One more time. Woe is Mike. Woe is Mike. Um, my favorite scene is actually the hacking scene. Oh, no kidding. Hear me out. So obviously Mike and the Jock go at it in a hacking battle. Okay. And when Mike hacks, I mean the Jock sends out whatever the virus, but when Mike sends the virus. Oh, to, to the teacher, teacher. Like, and she's she's like, oh, the principal. Oh, he wants he wants some hot sauce in the. Uh huh. Teacher's thirsty, <laughs> and she was running. And then after that, obviously the the good the the gaslighting and everything else. But I also like how he just whips out the floppy disk, <laughs> sticks it in. He gives him the look of you want to fight? Let's fight. And then you got Gilbert in the background gaslighting. I love how, like, they're hacking. Like, they're not even bothering with, like, the whole, like, Matrix, like, fake typing and and stuff like that. They're just, like, hit enter. Like, there's no program up. There's nothing up on their screen. It's just the desktop. And they just stick to floppy and hit enter. It does something. They hit enter again. Something else happens. It's like, what are you doing? I don't. That's a good floppy. It's a good floppy. I want that floppy. All right, that was my that was my number one actually. And then that you, was your number yeah, one, and, and then you, you rattled off my number two. So my number two, my number two is when the boom mm. comes in. That's my honorable mention. Mm. That whole scene was just all sorts of wrong. Oh, a hundred percent. I <laughs> felt like I could smell him through my TV. It was so bad just seeing this this gross, disgusting 
gross grotesque yeah why what did i say gross no i think he should be grotesque okay it makes it sound worse he's grotesque he's molesting mike um he tried he tried he really tried he tried to he even tried to drop the roofie in by putting the slime on his food just slime everywhere and he's like eating the cob eating the hamburger and mike's like apparently this is his snack but like He's trying to keep friendship that with the whole girl. scene and and trying to like keep up with the girl and he's just like, ew, ew. It's like why not just turn your back from what's happening for a sec and talk to her, and you're seeing- or say hey, I'll call you back, but Mike's got to be a Mike, and stay there on the phone while something horrible's happening in the background. Yeah, what I like is about your two scenes is that they actually tie together. Because he actually goes from from that scene, he goes to, uh, to the girl to apologize. Yep. For his, what happened? Yep. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. What's your number three? My number three is when we get all those aliens together, and he walks into the treehouse and goes, "Who wants me?" Kind of sort of thing. And then we meet the thirsty fish lady, and we meet the, the all the other there, aliens. There was like a, a, a kind of fish bowl or something like that. There was a ton of, in the the bones there. Mm-hmm. Um, the salesman's there. You just have a ton of different aliens. You have a ton of people there. And that was my favorite, just because you have all those different costumes. You could see. Oh, you had the TV guy too. Yep. There's the TV guy, and then there's like the salesman for whatever product he was trying to sell. I just like the fact that you have. That is actually my number three as well. All the. I just love seeing like that's why I watched the movie is to see, like, the character design. So, of course, I'm going to like the scene that all the characters are in. I think that's where you can let create creativity fly. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's where we got to see how creative some of these people are. Yep. Making it and it was creative. a joy to see. It was a joy to see. And while we're talking about, like, uh, like good stuff with this movie, do you have any, like, final thoughts with this movie? W- what did you... Uh, Wrapping you? it up, shining yeah. a bow on it? first half let's just cut that crap out let's get it out of there let's just watch the second half of the movie we're good cut out all the non-alien scenes first half yeah basically i mean there's a couple in the first half that are that are there but like yeah you know what i'll make this even easier for everybody the first part of the movie they show a scene of him sending out the message to the aliens and then they go back right Go fast forward when you see that first scene. Go fast forward, find it in the movie, and just restart the movie from there. Yep. There you go. That's I, that's that's where actually they should have just started the movie was there because that was a, like the forty five minute mark, something like that. So uh, there was too much. They could have cut all that out. There was so much. The love interest. Oh, Mike's woe is me. Victimhood. It was like a really, 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 really bad version of the Karate Kid. Yeah. Almost, except for it wasn't Daniel LaRusso moving in. There was no karate. There was no excitement. It was just some guy picking on another guy. There we are. Yeah. With a love girl, or the girl loving the dweeb. Which I don't know what she saw in that guy, but here we are. All right. So uh, let's go one to ten. How would you rate it? Uh, f- six. Six? Six. I was going to give it like a four or five. Yeah, I was going to go five, but... I like the alien designs enough, but that's my only draw. That's the aliens. The right. second half, I mean, if you watch the second half as a movie, maybe write the first half a little better. This movie has the potential, but it just, you have to literally have to do the uphill climb to the aliens. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's probably about five or six. Okay. Five or six. I agree with you. Five or six. Where you put four, but five or six. Yeah, I'd say four or five. Would you recommend to watch this movie? No. Ditto. Don't watch it. Check out the scenes if you can on YouTube of just like the aliens and check out like the alien design, like watch them in motion. Don't watch the movie. It's an hour and a half gone in my life. Skip the first half if you are going to watch it and save yourself some time. It felt like that bit from like Princess Bride where like years are being sucked off his life. Like, that's kind of what it felt like watching this. Yeah, a little bit. Like, it's just like, oh, jeez. Little Come on. Bit. Like, can we just get to the aliens already? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was thinking through the whole thing. I'm like, when are they coming? They could have done a lot better in that first half. But 
But all right. Thank you for listening to us. This has been another episode of the Backseat Critics. We love you, Ireland. We're out. We out.